Hey there, it's Sam and Amanda from Deep Trekker here again. No lessons for today. We're just doing a little reflection as we get ready to go to fabulous Las Vegas for our third DEMA show. Third DEMA show. Can you believe it? Pretty crazy. Yeah, and that very first one way back um, three years ago in Las Vegas, we weren't sure if we would be here after three years, but here we are going strong and um, with new products coming out and exciting things happen more than ever. So I got a little reflective and we're thinking about some of our customers over the past three years and I remember the days where we had a little nickname for every Deep Trekker DTG2 that left our shop and it was based on whatever it was doing. We had one that was the Oyster Hunter and the Body Finder and all kinds <laughs> of funny things like that. But uh, now that we have um, many hundreds of ROVs out in the field, we've lost track and are unable to, to keep track of what each and every one of them is doing anymore. Every day our customers are coming up with new ideas and new uses for the Deep Trekker and uh, we were just chatting about some of the most popular ones. Um, what yeah. sticks out in your mind, Amanda? Um, I think one of the biggest ones is uh, water tank inspection. So all of those water tanks that we see around our cities, potable water, it needs to be inspected all the time. So uh, instead of using a three to five man dive team, we're using a, a Deep Trekker to go in and do an inspection in 20 minutes. So the Patent and pitching system to move the thrusters away from the bottom instead of disturbing the sediment on the bottom is uh, really handy for them. That's really cool. Yeah, we uh, one of our customers said they can do a tank in like 20 minutes, which is really I know, reducing the need for yeah. a diver and also saving them a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the on the same idea, I guess, is um, instead of being inside, we have people looking at the outside of metal objects, um, like hulls, for example, and with our new integration of the Cygnus Thickness Tester, this is uh, happening more and more. But um, looking at ship hulls is becoming you know, more and more important as ships are moving around the world and coming into foreign ports. They're using them even to look for contraband and drugs mm -hmm. stuck to the side of, uh, of the ships. So it's really kind of a neat CSI type of, <laughs> of application for it. Um, any others that stick out for you? Yeah, uh, ships, you know, ships sometimes sink. So uh, doing different things for salvage if something falls off the ship. Uh, snowmobiles can go into the water, different things uh, throughout history or just in everyday accidents, um, doing salvage diving. So that's kind of a dangerous job for divers to uh, go into unknown situations for uh, looking for these missing objects. So using the deep trucker to do observational awareness and figure out how to retrieve objects and what the best uh, way to do everything has been really handy as well. Yeah, for sure. And it's not, uh, unfortunately, it's not always just, you know, ships and snowmobiles and airplanes mm -hmm. and things, but also uh, you know, sometimes we, we find that people are falling in, uh, evidence from crimes is also in the water, and deep trekkers are being used in, in search and rescue and first responder operations all the time. Um, we have quite a few deployed with different police forces, mm -hmm. fire and search and rescue teams around the world. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, something else I can think of kind of on a different line is uh, pipeline inspection, so sure. going through um, even in our suburbs and all of our cities, all of the uh, stormwater pipes, those need to be inspected all of the time to make sure that we're not having flooding uh, where people are building the houses now. So constant inspection of the internal pipes, being able to do the full 270 uh, rotate of the camera to look at the top at all the welds, different things like that, uh, is imperative for uh, keeping our community safe. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, we have people looking both inside the pipes and in the oil and gas market looking outside. Of course, oil and mm -hmm. gas being yeah. big business, uh, very important. When we think of oil and gas, we tend to think of really big ROVs, but they're using the Deep Trekker DTG2 sometimes to even look at those big ROVs because the big ROVs have to be brought up with the crane. If a problem happens, sometimes they can just deploy the small ROV like the Deep Trekker down and have a look and see without uh, needing to bring that back up on deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Something else uh, that one of our biggest customers, uh, Environment Canada, has been doing a lot of work. So different researchers, universities, uh, organizations that need to be doing monitoring for different environmental reasons um, are using the Deep Trekker to do sediment sample um, pulls and retrieving evidence and specimens or small um, small anemones, things like that, um, so that they can actually do research and make sure that we're not harming the environment. That's really cool, and as our, our population grows, that becomes more and more important. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that comes to my mind on the same idea is aquaculture. So as our population grows, the need for good quality protein grows, and, and fish farming and aquaculture is becoming more and more important. 
and doing that in an environmental way is actually very important as well. The deep trekkers have been employed since the very beginning um, in Norway, Chile and on the west coast of Canada for aquaculture cage inspection, making sure that there's no breach in the nets and cages so that those um, fish that are being farmed there are not escaping into the environment, also being used for soil sampling and environmental monitoring in those cases as well. Yeah, yeah so we've kind of gone over a lot of commercial uses, but uh, one of the things in kind of how deep trekkers started was based on fun and treasure hunting. For so sure. We still have a, a lot of customers that are just down there looking for some lost gold, going into old shipwrecks, you know, going into the places where divers can't go, the small little areas. Uh, so it's a lot of fun too, uh, even though it can be used for a lot of commercial uses, we still have those recreational users too. For sure, I'm still <laughs> waiting to find my cache of Spanish gold, but <laughs> uh, up here in Ontario, Canada, we don't seem to find a lot of that. Most of our not. <laughs> sunken ships were carrying coal and corn. So um, we are looking forward to getting out of the snow and down to Las mm -hmm. Vegas and uh, learning all about the other uses for ROVs and how they can supplement commercial diving things of that nature. So come and visit us in DEMA if you are in Las Vegas next week. We're booth 3111 in the Las Vegas Convention Center. If you don't have the opportunity to come and visit us there, have a look. Keep checking in our website. We're coming out with new products and new ideas, new videos and cool stuff that our mm -hmm. customers are doing every day. Thanks so much, Amanda.